and I'm here at St Ives School here at the Tate to talk about our favourite sculpture by Peter Lonnie. It was great having the opportunity to research and talk about Peter Lanyon, a local artist who we didn't know much about. We just walked into the Tate, looked around for a while, and we all selected the same piece, which looked dynamic and interesting. It was great that it turned out to be by Peter Lanyon. George Peter Lanyon was born in 1918 to W.H. Lanyon, an amateur photographer and musician. He went to school at Clifton College and he started after school painting lessons. Adrian Stokes, who introduced him to contemporary painting and sculpture, recommended he went to Houston Road School, where he studied for months. He met artists like Ben Nicholson, Barbara Hepworth, and Noam Gabo when World War II broke out. He received an art tuition from Nicholson, where his art's character changed completely. George Peter Mannion died in Taunton in 1964 after a gliding accident. He was 46. Lanyon began training as a glider pilot in 1959 and he said that it helped him to get a more complete knowledge of the landscape. He used his gliding experiences as the source for paintings that gave an aerial view of the Cornish landscape. Abstract art explores the relationships of form and colour. Abstract sculptures are designed to give your own meaning to the piece, requiring an open mind and big imagination. The style of Peter Lanyon's work changed as he began making constructions. Throughout the 1940s, the influence of Nicholson and Garbo were very obvious in Lance's work. Peter Lanyon's construction piece was made in 1947 when he was working in Naam Garbo's studio in Carbis Bay, Cornwall. He acknowledged Garbo as the biggest inspiration for his sculpture. You can see this in the curves of construction, a feature that was used in many of Garbo's works. Construction itself is made of painted aluminium and plywood on a perspex base. Lanyon started making other sculptures like this in 1939, although in a letter to Tate and Times, he revealed that they were not complete things in themselves, but as experiments in space to establish the illusion and the content of space in painting. Construction has been a part of the Tate collection since 1971. Construction has continuous flowing lines that end in the middle of the piece. There is a great deal of movement within the sculpture. When researching a sculpture, we found that it's often photographed and never filmed from one view. That's why it's great for us to show you all sides. It has been great learning and talking about Peter Landing's sculpture. We hope you've learned as much as we have.